my whole intention in doing this, you know, uh, here in Texas, especially South Texas, where it's hot and hay dries out quickly, you don't, uh, from my understanding, it's not really necessary to run hay preservative down here. However, if I ever get caught in the rain again, or if I'm in a hurry and I need to cut one day, rake and bale the following day, normally it's a three day process on getting the hay dry and bailed. But if I need to speed things up, I can run this hay preservative and uh, potentially save a crop. Because if I uh, lose any of that hay that I bailed in my first cutting that got rained on, if it molds and spoils, I mean, that's upwards of, you know, if it's, if it's half the crop, it could be $2,500, $3,000 that I lost. So this investment with a moisture meter in the tractor, this uh, tank, and then a cost preservative, I mean, it pays for itself within one round of potentially losing, you know, half my hay. So it's well worth the investment, well worth the time. It's a cheap, cheaper setup than what you can buy online. The big fancy ones are super nice. They'll probably last you years and years. This one, I would imagine after a couple of years, I may have a leak here and there, or uh, I may have to replace that pump, but you know, it's my first kit, first time doing it. So uh, I'm gonna start out cheap and then maybe I can work my way up to nicer stuff. So this is a 25 gallon tank uh, made by Master Manufacturing. I believe it's Chinese made because it was Pretty cheap. I uh, bought it from atwoods.com. I'll post a link below, but but it says it's for hay preservative and it is a three gallon per minute pump. It's got everything except, uh, let's see here. I think it's got everything. It's got a regulator, screens, nozzles. There's the nozzles. This may be a pressure gauge. I'm pretty sure it had a pressure gauge. Anyways, four nozzles to go across the front, which is quite a bit. I may have to reduce that down to three. I don't think I'm gonna need four, but my plan is to, I'm gonna get some angle iron um, on, on this side of these bolts, on the support, and basically build an H over this cover of the PTO shaft and the gearbox. So it's gonna go up over to a platform where the tank's gonna sit on it and then down. And I'll bolt on the back side of that bracket there. That angle iron will fit on the back side of this flush against the metal. So that's the plan. I don't know how professional it's gonna look, but I'm gonna get started on it. Here's where I'm at. I got the two metal supports cut out, got holes drilled. Let me get all that grass picked up before I start welding around here, but uh, got some notches cut out for those bolts. And I'm in the process of doing the same over here. I'll trim these out with the torch, clean them up. Brackets are mounted, finger tight. It's The tank should be sitting where I'll still be able to see my gauges over here. You know, the tank will be right up here in the center, so I can still see down this area. So it's kind of the best best option to put it you know thinking about well the big bracket right here on the side coming up l and over and coming up but that just made more sense because the holes were already there i can remove it and uh that angle iron should be pretty sturdy so next thing i'm going to do is uh cut these off level so the tank's not going downhill okay here's where i'm at now i've got the plate cut out. This is eighth inch thick plate. Um, it's 11 inches wide, which is the base is 12, but I already had um, a, a, a piece pretty much pre-cut the width. So 11 is fine. I'm going to put some supports underneath, but um, got some holes, pre-marked holes uh, that I'm going, that I've already pre-drilled and uh, I'm going to bolt it to the plate. The plate's gonna sit on those two supports and I'm gonna put an angle, piece of angle iron across the front and the back side and weld it all up to make it sturdy. And also, um, even though the tank's gonna be bolted, I'm still gonna put straps 
uh, over the top of it just to keep it secure because I don't trust, you know, those bolts might walk out or, or it might pull out of that plastic over time. So that's where I'm at and keep going. Well, here's what it looks like just sitting on those mounts. I don't have anything tacked up or welded yet, but I think this is the position I'm gonna put it in because I can see this and reach this strainer from the front side. It tells you your gallons on both sides of the tank. On this side, there's gonna be a drain, but this is what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna put a piece of angle iron on this back side to weld under here, and then one on the front side is also and that'll also allow me to uh, run the strap down and hook underneath to the angle iron. Well, got that back piece tacked in there. Uh, I'm gonna put the front one on, tack it up, and then I'm gonna pull it off and weld it all up. But when I pull these bolts out, I should be able to slide this forward and pull it right off. That'll be pretty simple. There's the underside. Got my hooks for my straps. And didn't cost me a thing because I had all this metal left over. Well, it is June 23rd and we are getting some rain. And thank goodness because I had put fertilizer down after the first cutting and it needed to I needed something to get it soaked in, but I'm going to continue on with the preservative mount. And then I've got to, uh, this tire's got a slow leak. i got to take it off and have it fixed. But this is what it looks like. we got it all painted up. I'm going to continue working here. Pretty good instructions. It's got, uh, the chart here, uh, your gauge pressure with your flow rate at your, when you're doing three miles an hour, four miles an hour, 20 inch spacing. So I'm assuming that's the nozzles are 20 inches apart, uh, five, six. So uh, that's good to know. That's your gallons per minute. That's the rate. I'm pretty sure though, when you when I order a uh, hay preservative, it's gonna have a chart as well to let me know how much to spray. All right, let's clarify something here. This chart tells you what tips to run uh, when you're trying to determine your flow rate. So when I get the preservative and it tells me to run uh, a certain amount of gallons per minute, I'm gonna have to refer this chart to see what tip to use. Uh, I believe 30 to 40 PSI is the norm from what I've researched on the internet and YouTube. Uh, I wanted to stay around 30 PSI, so uh, I'm gonna have to wait till I get the preservative to find out uh, which tip to put in here. I usually bail at five to six miles an hour, so it comes standard with a 2.0 tip. You can see that two on there. These little pieces just unscrew to clean out, so uh, I'm probably gonna have to, based off this, well, see, I just gotta figure out what the gallons per minute is going to be for the chemical. So anyways, I'm going to have to, I may have to order tips later on down the road, but once I get the chemical, which I haven't looked in to see which uh, brand I'm going to run yet, then I'll, when I get it in, I'll definitely, for those of you interested, I'll do a, an update. That whole pickup wheel is only 48 inches. So technically I just need one spray nozzle, but I think I'm going to go ahead and set two up just to be safe. And then in the distance, from where I'm gonna set these up at to the actual pickup wheel is about 28 inches, which I need to be 13 to 18, but when you factor in the height of the wind row and the fluffiness of it, and then the nozzles are gonna set in a little bit, I think I'll be right there at 18 inches. So I may try to use these as existing holes somehow, but I'm gonna have two nozzles set up. It comes with four nozzles. I only need two. So I may, I may just take these clamps, you can remove these clamps. So I may just take this off and cap this 
somehow. That's about 22 inches. So 22 inches. We'll put it pretty much centered on this bar here. So it'll get plenty, plenty of coverage. All right, I got this kind of figured out here. Uh, I have to take it back off because this fitting at the bottom of the regulator, the instructions didn't uh, specify what it was for, but it's for a wand. Uh, it comes with this plug here. So I'm not gonna run a, a wand on it. You know, if, it, if I guess if you're mounting this on an ATV or something, spraying chemicals, you would want a wand so you could spot spray. So I'm gonna pull it back off and uh, put this plug in it. I'm gonna buy another one of these cigarette uh, 12 volt power sources off Amazon. I will put a link down below uh, because this one is going to power my bell siren and it's also powering my uh, moisture meter. And those of you that have this tractor, you know you've got a cigarette lighter down here. But you also have another one over here on this side. So I'm going to go that route. I will have wires running all over the place when I'm. Uh, bailing and running this this preservative in the, in the monitor but the benefit of running those cigarette lighters is i can take everything out of the cat out of the tractor and not have wires running everywhere i also don't have to pull apart this panel over here to to splice in power off some of these switches all right here's the plates i ended up making them out of uh eighth inch because I had this strap already cut to length and I didn't do any uh, minimized amount of cutting. Now I just gotta drill a hole, three quarter inch hole to put that through and then a half inch hole to mount it here. I was gonna bend it around the bar. I don't think that's gonna be necessary. I may have to, once I get it bolted and tight, I may have to actually bend this lower part back towards me like this, facing like that so it sprays closer towards the hay. Otherwise, it's gonna be straight back. And I believe, from what I've read online, this uh, hay preservative, it's pretty much like an acid, and it's corrosive to metal. So uh, I don't want this thing spraying all over the bather the whole time. I want it pointed down. Uh, and then, uh, that way it just gets all in the hay. So let me uh, get all this uh, made up and painted, and then I'll check back in with you shortly. I got the tabs mounted up there. There's that one on that side. That's what it looks like. So now I just need to put the sprayer nozzles on. Pretty much a do-it-yourself uh, hay preservative kit. You know, the gauges up there, I can see from the cab. When you buy the high dollar kits, they come with, they come with a cab mounted adjuster where you can see your pressure. You can adjust your rate on the fly. With this one, you have to go in and, and adjust the regulator uh, before you start spraying. But I think, um, 35, 40 PSI is a normal, so I don't know why I would need to adjust the rate unless I get into heavy, heavy dew, 
or uh, super wet hay, or if my uh, tonnage per acre is super high or super low. But, you know, I would think that you kind of have a just on, if you're gonna make a lot of hay after your first or second bale, then once you get the regulator adjusted, you're good to go. So, um, I don't know, maybe if there's a thin spot in your field, you need to adjust on the fly, but I'm gonna run it like that. So, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for hitting the thumbs up button for those of you that, uh, that have recently. And uh, as far as upcoming videos, I've got second cutting. I've got um, out here at my house, uh, I've got all this native grass that needs to be cut. And I think what I'm gonna do is, uh, I've never square bailed, I've only round bailed, but I do have uh, a square baler underneath this tarp. And I went through it a year and a half ago Got it all ready thinking I was going to square bell, and I never did. But uh, it's a John Deere, yeah. But I'll get it out and do a video. Also, this is a square barrel, a square bell stacker, it's a stack liner 1037. It needs some work. I went through and rebuilt the drive line on it, it hadn't been used in over 10 years, it had been sitting, but I had to replace the bearings on this drive line. And same thing back here, you can see that new bearing. I had to take the chain and everything off and uh, had to get that chain working. Uh, I got it all going and then it popped a line right here. These metal lines, so I have to replace those lines. And then this cylinder, you can see the, the rust pits on it, it's bad. So it, it really needs a new rod built and that thing's leaking. So I may, I was gonna scrap the idea on getting it fixed because it'd be uh, four or five hundred dollars just to have that cylinder fixed, but I don't know. I mean, I may do a video on it. It would be neat to get that thing going. It seems like nowadays most guys that square bell and run machinery to handle the bells, they use grapples, accumulators and grapples. But that would be a, a big investment. When we've already got this stack liner here that needs five, six hundred dollars worth of work. Uh, maybe, maybe that's all it would need, but. So anyways, I've got, uh, I've got that. I need to build the dual hay spear for the three point. I gotta find the spears to order. Uh, there's a gentleman that commented below on some of my previous videos that told me to avoid a certain brand. So um, I appreciate that. So anyways, I gotta hunt for the hay spears and get those on order. You know, believe it or not, I'm having a lot of fun making these videos. Uh, I'm glad it's it's able to help a lot of people out. Uh, that was my whole intention in starting this channel was to put information out there on this tractor because there wasn't anything there. And um, it kind of took off from there, you know, expanding out into other, making other videos on uh, stuff other than the tractor. So if you subscribed, I appreciate it. If you hit the like button, I appreciate it. And uh, until the next one, see you next time.